This is Wondering Universe. Today, I'll be telling you another story. A story that has left one person baffled for years over an early UFO encounter. So, let's go exploring. In 1973, Calvin Parker was 19, a hard worker who just wanted to build a home and raise a family. But those plans would be derailed during a fishing trip in Pascagoula. First, let's consider what UFO means, because technically these things are UFOs. All it means is that it's an unidentified flying object. It doesn't mean it's alien in origin, or it doesn't mean that it's intelligently being controlled by man or by little green men or anything else, space reptiles, etc. Some aliens, all right, or some weird technology or whatever. And I'll start with this. We have perhaps reached the point in this country where curiosity is on its deathbed, and here's why. UFO encounters of the third kind are seldom frequent. When one does spot a flying object, it may trigger a lucky break of varying magnitude. These sporadic moments mostly occur in secluded areas like in dark, lonely highways, bushland, forest, mountain ranges, farmland and barren desert plains. Once they make their appearance, they'll come across as pleasant, making it a comfortable acquaintance without a hostile presence. At other times, they can bring forth an intruding vibe, an eerie feeling of being harassed. Rarely, they would appear out of nowhere standing in one's room. There are countless fantastic tales of visitors from other worlds that scarcely offer a we come in peace reception. They just so happen to land on someone's doorstep and invited themselves unannounced. If you ever had a UFO encounter of the third kind, you should be so fortunate to have experienced it, as it only comes once in a lifetime. In this video, we're going to explore another UFO encounter. A UFO encounter he witnessed 14 years before the Nullarbor incident. Remember the Nulls family UFO encounter in the Nullarbor Plains? It certainly was an experience that shook them to the core. Yet the humiliation they suffered in the hands of the media and the public was barbaric. Nevertheless, their lives have never been the same since. As for Jerry, he did the honours by keeping it to himself. So, without further ado, let's get into Jerry's UFO encounter of the third kind story. But that doesn't mean it's a flying saucer, and it doesn't mean that it's piloted by ALF, or something like that. A real bright beam appeared all over us, but it kind of blinded me for a second, and when I got my vision back, I seen three bulky looking creatures coming toward us. For one man's journey is another man's tale. His next UFO experience has affected his conscience for years. 
If his 1988 Erie Air Highway encounter wasn't haunting enough, then this next one is. Jerry Borey's first encounter happened in 1974 when he was nine years old. This event took place at his parents' home in the northern suburbs of Perth in Western Australia. The property was surrounded by bushland covered in an assortment of large native trees and plant life. One late winter night, Jerry got acquainted with his father's friend, a refrigeration engineer from Norway, who arrived on a cargo ship docked at Fremantle from the North Atlantic seas. His parents invited him to spend the night at their house and he kindly took to the invitation. Jerry had known his father's friend for some time and humbly called him Uncle Tom. During a quiet, dark and low night, Jerry slept on the couch whilst his uncle slept in his bedroom. Just after midnight, whilst his parents were quietly asleep, Jerry was feeling restless and unsettled. He lay awake, staring into nothingness, until he heard what he described as a dozen trucks pulled up on the driveway with its lights on high beam. Unbeknownst to him, the entire lounge room lit up like daylight. The lights were so blinding he could barely see what was going on. So he bravely approached the window slowly. He could barely make out what he saw. Strange, odd-shaped lights were hovering above the house. Then the spacecraft moved effortlessly 150 metres away from the house and landed on the edge of the bush property. Shortly, he witnessed something he never thought in his wildest dreams. A green shimmering light came out of the bright white light. It proceeded to walk out of the bush scrub, up the road and up towards the driveway. The sight of it frightened him and he quickly crawled under the couch out of sight. What he witnessed next will mystify you. This green light entered silently through the front door. It shone like a gleaming aura floating its way along the hallway straight towards his bedroom. Whilst he glanced from underneath the couch without uttering a sound, he watched Uncle Tom being gently guided out of the bedroom hand in hand by brown greyish looking beings. Uncle Tom appeared to be in a dreamlike state. Like waving a magic wand, the front door opened wide on its own. These beings carefully aided Uncle Tom through the door and down the steps. At that moment, Jerry quickly jumped out from underneath the couch and raced to the front door. Just when he was about to reach for the doorknob, it immediately slammed shut. Astonished and dazed, he charged to the window watching Uncle Tom walk down the front path. To his surprise, one of the wrinkly old-faced beings darted a glance at him and the encounter surely ends thereafter. The next morning, Jerry felt he slept soundly as though nothing happened. At 6am, he hastily walked in the kitchen, glancing at his parents and Uncle Tom having breakfast. He walked up to his uncle's side and asked him, Where did you go last night? And his confused uncle replied, What are you talking about? Unconvinced by his vague reaction, Jerry persisted. Then, his father gave him a rather stern and sceptical look like he was being stupid, and Jerry shut up. He and the family never said another word of the incident. Jerry witnessed a few effects these beings had. They carried no weapons of any kind. They wore some type of tight-skinned snazzy suit and far better and sexier than those awful NASA baby jumpsuits. And they were shielded by a glowing green type of force field. Hmm. 
What happens next made Jerry quite distraught. The following day, he strolled out to the very spot where the spacecraft landed. To his astonishment, the area was covered in a large circular indentation. He examined it closely and noticed several major clean depressions on the ground. The plant material that once blossomed vanished. Judging by the landing spot, the spacecraft had difficulty manoeuvring through the massive trees nearby. He estimated that it landed at an angle. There were no burnt holes or marks, just a clean depression, like it was blown away by a vacuum cleaner. Unexpectedly, whilst mucking around with the neighbourhood kids in the bush scrub, these kids noticed deep depressions on the ground. They asked him, who dug this hole? And Jerry's response was, it was a spaceship. And they all laughed. Jerry learns on that day to keep his UFO experience to himself, avoiding the pain of humiliation. Interestingly, these kids in the neighbourhood never heard and saw no spaceship that very night. The only eyewitness to this UFO encounter were Jerry and his father's Norwegian friend. Jerry spent years investigating this phenomena. Whatever the beings from another world intentions were remains unknown. Uncle Tom went back to Norway and lived life as normal. He never spoke of the experience to anyone. For years, he remained silent until Jerry paid him a visit in early 1994. The next story his uncle told him certainly was mind-blowing. To determine the cause of this bright light phenomena as a nine-year-old instead of debunk its existence, one idea might be that his uncle encountered a UFO whilst out at sea. Okay, this is where Pandora's box still remains shut. Why is it that Jerry and Uncle Tom got to witness beings visiting them and not everyone on Earth? Why them? Is there some kind of psychic phenomena on an unconscious level that we are yet to tap into? Is there another explanation to this mystery? This has perplexed me for years. I always wondered if they had a huge itinerary of specific humans they are in search of. Ones possess certain abilities that cater to their interests. However, when I came across his story, I began to realise this is not some random occurrence. I seen three bulky looking creatures coming toward us and they was probably four, four and a half, five foot tall. They built like football players, but I noticed they kind of moved mechanical wise and they was floating off the ground. By the time we stood up and turned around, they was there on us all at one time. So two of them got a hold of Charlie, one of them got a hold of myself and instantly I felt like that all. I just got relaxed. Now, for our sake, I hope it's not the aliens; it's us, because some of some of that shit's pretty scary if it's in the hands of the enemy. On the on the good side, though, if it is aliens, there's a you know pretty good shot that they're not intending to come down here Independence Day style and blow the shit out of us. Because if they were going to, and they have that kind of technology, they'd have already done it and gotten it out of the way. And the bad side, what? Well, what if it's China or Russia? What if they're the ones behind this stuff? Well, America better keep its soap on a rope is all I'm saying. This is a distraction. You are never going to get a genuine disclosure of any meaningful classified material on UFOs. I'll tell you why. I think that they realize that all this is horseshit. 
Little green men are not visiting our planet. Our planet is probably too toxic for them with all the pollen and so forth and oxidizing atmosphere. There's probably not anything that little green men would want here. And if they wanted to observe us, if they understood the basic premise of what we call science, they would understand that interacting with the thing you're studying is generally a bad idea. We are a cognitive species, would see them and act differently. And unless they wanted to perform some sort of A-B test, there'd be no reason to do that. Jerry should be so fortunate to have two UFO encounters in his lifetime. For the rest of us, these encounters are either sporadic or never do happen. What are these worldly beings' intentions? Do they truly come across as hostile, intrusive and malicious? It is possible that so few of these worldly beings would possess such primitive characteristics to cause such harm. Some people who have confronted these beings experienced the opposite. They showed themselves as modest and composed. If so, then why do these encounters only happen to a few instead of the many? Do they share a psychic telepathic capability that taps into higher realms of consciousness? The only explanation to this mystery is that certain few are able to share it to those who have it. Perhaps they had the right stuff to tune into Uncle Tom's extrasensory mind as a means of making contact. These spatial anomalies have been surveying Earth for one reason. They're testing us, taking special considerations and discretions, evading detection from military and aviation radars patiently waiting for us humans to make an imperative choice that will send us in a direction that will either make us or break us. It certainly makes you wonder why they are so interested in the way we think. In the next video, I'll be sharing a story from a woman who witnessed a strange anomaly out in the middle of a suburb, along with many others who witnessed it. That's all for now.